we have a session on skills and tools for collaboration. Um, we all know that collaboration is something that university is very interested in us doing it because it's at the heart of solving complex research problems. Um, but often people don't know how to do it, don't know how to go about it, how to start it. So this panel's um, going to go through some of those hints and tips, some practical stuff, some less practical stuff, some of the um, social stuff, um, and some cautionary notes about how to collaborate effectively and enjoyably. Um, so I'm Kim Wilkins, I'm the Deputy Associate Dean um, of Research in the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences and I'll start by um, acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land we've gathered on today who are the Jagera and Turrbal people. I pay my respects to the Elders past, present and emerging for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and the hopes of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples across the nation. Today we're going to hear from a number of researchers who are at the top of their game in collaboration. We're not all natural born collaborators, in fact up until maybe five years ago I would have described myself as doesn't play well with others. <laughs> um, but then I changed completely and I'm at the stage now where I just actually don't ever want to work alone again. Um, I mean we know that cognitive diversity improves outcomes, especially in complex research problems with lots of moving parts, but more importantly for me I found the right tribe uh, to work with, so a lot of my joy in collaboration comes from the social aspects of it. And so we might, um, we'll go get, get a little bit closer to some of these ideas as we go along, um, and I hope you'll have patience with me contributing too, but I promise I won't be one of those chairs that dominates, I promise I won't. I, I don't like when that happens, so I won't do it to you. Um, also, I wanted to say to you guys, I think my questions today will probably focus more on collaborations with other researchers um, rather than collaborations outside the university, simply because next month we have a whole session on working with end users. But I do want you to feel free to use examples from wherever in your practice. Um, so I don't want to limit you to only talking about researchers. So I'll introduce the panel. Um, we have Elizabeth Stevens, an Australian Research Council Future Fellow and an Associate Professor of Cultural Studies in the Institute for Advanced Studies in the Humanities at the University of Queensland, which is here. She's the author of three monographs, A Critical Genealogy of Normality, co-authored with Peter Kreil, Anatomy is Spectacle, um, uh, public exhibitions of the body from 1700 to the present and queer writing, homoeroticism in Jean Genet's fiction. Her future fellowship examines the cultural history of experimentation from early modern science to contemporary experimental art. Let's have a little round of applause for this group. Thank you. Kelly Fielding's uh, research <coughs> focuses on understanding the social and psychological determinants of environmental sustainability and using these insights to develop communication to promote um, greater environmental action. She takes an interdisciplinary approach to her research, working with researchers from other disciplines and collaborating with local government, state government and catchment management authorities. Her research is focused on a range of areas including sustainable urban water management, climate change communication, koala conservation, plastic pollution, sustainable natural resource management, domestic and public place recycling and environmental activism. Please welcome Kelly. And at the end of the line, we have, well not just. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> not I can show the line here. No problem. Um, uh, at the end of the row, we have Kim Nichols, uh, currently the Director of Research in the School of Education. Um, she's been a science educator in the school for 15 years. In that time, she's led and participated in many collaborative and interdisciplinary teams with Category 1 through for funding. She's currently leading an ARC linkage project, community-based STEM professional learning for teachers of middle years, which is a collaboration with Department of Education, Australian Catholic University, the Queensland Museum Network, QGC and several regional schools in the Darling Downs and in central Queensland. This linkage project collaboration that grew out of a three-year collaboration with Queensland Museum Network and um, collaborative work with the Department of Education received a UQ Partners in Research Excellence Award in 2018. So welcome Kim. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks very much and it's lovely that you're all here and I'm so excited to hear about some of your collaborations and um, I'm sure the audience is too. I'm going to ask um, you guys a bunch of questions and we just have sort of an informal discussion and then um, afterwards I'll turn to the audience for questions and then after that if we want to go and finish off the sandwiches we can, that's fine. 
Um, so I'm going to start by asking you, I, I don't usually like to do the go in a row and answer the question, but I do want to just for this one. If you can tell me about your most enjoyable current collaboration and why it's so enjoyable. Elizabeth, would you kick us off? Okay, so I'm the one who doesn't get time to reflect on the question <laughs> and right. jumps right in. Okay, well, I, I'll start off. I mean, the, you mentioned my future fellowship is looking at intersections between arts and sciences. Um, and so working across those two fields is collaborative. That's something that I'm working on um, at the moment. And maybe I can talk a little bit yes, about that as we go do. along. One of the ones that you, um, you mentioned when you were reading my book titles there, of course, is a co-authored book, which is yes. a collaborative one. So maybe I will mention that as one of my most uh, enjoyable collaborations. Right. Shall I mention a little bit about how that Absolutely. process worked? And why it was so enjoyable? Yeah. So um, the last book that I um, that I um, released was at the beginning of last year, and it's a book on the history of normality, a very interdisciplinary subject. But I co-wrote it with a colleague of mine, Peter Kreil, who's much more senior than I am. He's written a lot more books than I have, and so the the collaboration was a very rich one. But it also was a gave me the opportunity to work with someone who's very much at the top of their game, who has 25 years more experience you know, in writing than I did. Um, so I learned a lot from that collaborative um, process as well. And two things struck me about that. One is um, Peter Kreil is an intellectual historian and I'm someone who works in cultural studies. So I work a lot more on popular culture and he works a lot more on the history of medicine and science than I do. So it was fascinating to see how those two different perspectives perspectives could together address a topic that neither one of us could have looked at alone. So neither one of us could have written the book on normality without working um, together. The, the interesting thing for me was actually the process. I mean, the thing about collaboration is that something happens between the people involved in collaboration that can't happen individually. That's the fun part about it. It's what makes it different from other forms of work. And so the, the process of collaborating on that book, it took us over five years to write it. It is not a short book. <laughs> it's 200,000 words long. It's twice the length of a usual um, book. And we, we wrote that book by having lunch together every single week, once a week, we would have lunch together and we would discuss what we had written in the interim, in the week that had passed. So every single word of that book was written and worked over by both of us. It wasn't, we didn't just write individual chapters and then put them together as a book. We actually worked and thought together over a five year period. And that was for someone who has spent the rest of their career writing alone in an office somewhere, to actually co-write in that way was a really a unique but an extremely enjoyable process. Oh, fantastic. That sounds <laughs> great. Great fun. Kelly. <clears throat> I'm going to go uh, slightly off topic because I'm not going to talk about a current collaboration. I do have a really great collaboration, of more than one at the moment, but I'm going to talk about a previous one that I had. Sure. Um, as part of, um, I don't know whether, whether people are familiar with cooperative research centres. Mm -hmm. I think we don't sort of have as much involvement in them, I think, in the humanities and social sciences as, say, people over in the biophysical sciences do. So I've been part of this cooperative research centre for water sensitive cities. And it has really been a great experience. I mean, I was probably quite lucky that the majority of the time I was, I've been involved in it was when I was a research focused academic because it really takes up a lot of time. There's a lot of, it, it's for anyone who doesn't know what a CRC is, it brings together industry partners as well as university people. And so you are, uh, you know, working with people, researchers in other disciplines, but also, you know, often meeting up with people in industry. And so it's a really exciting, uh, place to be because you know it certainly in the one that I was in uh, it was very interdisciplinary so you know we had people who were engineers <coughs> and political scientists and legal scholars and uh, you know people like me as well as uh, you know a sociologist you know the whole spectrum it was quite incredible the the diversity of people's disciplines and then you would have these opportunities to kind of meet with people who were out there in the water industry as well and so it was just a kind of it was a really exciting thing to be part of because you felt like you were at the forefront of 
uh, changes that are happening in society, and you are helping to facilitate those changes in society. And I, you know, you know, it's a big, you know, CRC is a big kind of collaboration, but it's also broken down into smaller bits. And so I um, led a particular um, pro, uh, pro, not a program, a project, and. I just got on famously with these other researchers from Monash University. They were one of the other um, universities involved. You know when you just kind of meet people and you suddenly just go, gee, I really like you. You're great. And so we just immediately got along. And so it was kind of, it was, it was creating these new friendships and, and you know, connections to, to researchers at other universities as well as feeling like you were part of something bigger than yourself. So it was really exciting. I really loved it. That's great. And Kim? Actually, uh, same for me. Um, CRC was probably in the second year um, of my tenure here. So I've been here 15 years now. Um, and it was a cooperative research centre around sugarcane, but it was biotechnologies of sugarcane. And um, it was really exciting. And what drew me to it, I think, was because I used to be a scientist. <coughs> And um, so I, I was allowed to work with scientists again, which was really nice. And um, it, was a, it was a big a CRC. It gave me a lot of money, probably mm. the most yes, I've yes. ever had. I agree. I, that was the most big, money I've, I was so awash with funds. It was incredible. It was wonderful. <laughs> um, and we had four PhD students on it, um, and they all were successful. Um, and I got to send them all over the place to international conferences. <coughs> um, and so they and they had a fantastic time because CRC often had these wonderful little retreats and they'd bring us all over and we'd all present and they'd do symposiums and you know it was just it was highly interactive and collaborative mm -hmm. um, but a range of different people from industry um, and there were people involved in from the Faculty of Science here at UQ as well so it was it was just a fantastic starting point for me I think it was the big first big team that I um, led and um, it was scientists and educators. There was quite a few of us from the School of Education on it and we were all little bees at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so there was so many wonderful things about that project. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. That sounds great. Yeah. And when you said level bees, I thought you said little bees, and I oh, had sorry. this beautiful vision. <laughs> My Canadian <laughs> accent, sorry. Working away industriously. <laughs> we were, we were busy bees, but all level bees on yeah. it. Yeah, it was oh, that's fabulous. fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Um, um, so, um, where are my questions? Put your glasses on. <laughs> right. I want to ask now about why should we collaborate? And I want to think now more of the sort of more non-social things, because I want to have a whole section towards the end where we <coughs> talk about the social interactions of collaboration, because I think they're fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, but what are the sort of outcomes you have had in collaboration, sort of intellectual outcomes, um, uh, outcomes that have benefited, you know, organisations, the community, whatever, um, that you might not have achieved without a team. Can you think of any? And you can just jump in and if nobody, mm -hmm. if someone doesn't want to answer that one, that's also fine. Has anyone got any? Why, uh, why do you think, I mean, I guess the bigger question is why collaborate? Mm -hmm. It's just more fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you can do, it, you're more productive, mm. you know, you, you get pushed uh, because you, you know, you've got you know, it's not just you. So, I mean, I, I understand that, you know, in the humanities, it is much more a kind of, you know, you're the person kind of driving it and you're not necessarily kind of working with other people. But if you're part of a team, then, you know, p p different people can take ownership of different parts of your project and kind of really forge ahead with that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of leads to the, you know, to greater productivity. You know, you get stimulated by different ideas. One of the kind of downside, one of the downsides of collaboration can be if you work with someone who, you find kind of difficult, but mm. my experience is always that that difficult person often pushes you into a direction or or, mm. or kind of shows you something that you might not otherwise have mm -hmm. thought of or, yeah. you know, you wouldn't have gone down that pathway. So, you know, they there's always some kind of benefit to having that person. I mean, it's very rare to have a difficult person, but, you know, mm. if you have one then. So I think you, you, you start to think about things differently. You know, you, you get these different perspectives. I mean, I was a program leader in the CRC and I literally had to read all of these different reports coming from different disciplines. It was amazing how much more I learnt about, you know, the way different disciplines think about an issue. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just think it's really enriching and 
I don't know what else to say about well, that. Well, what, um, what kind of things did you learn? I mean, you can give us an ex example if you uh, like. I mean, just... Like, was there anything that made you go, wow, I did not know that happened in the world? I mean, I think it's just more that, you know, you can get very... Uh, you know, the sort of world, the, the academic world is such that there's so much happening within your own little research area, it's hard to keep up with that. So mm. kind of stepping outside of it and, uh, you know, trying to kind of find out what how other kind of disciplines think about this issue is really hard yeah. because you just don't have time to do that reading. Mm. But if someone's kind of packages it up or, or, you know, you have a conversation with them and suddenly you go, oh, okay, that's mm. a different way to think about it. And I'm, I'm struggling to think of a specific example. But yeah, sure. but yeah it, mm. it, it just kind of, you know, you have this you suddenly have this different perspective, a different way of looking at something that, you know, you kind of suspected that that may be how other disciplines think about it, but mm. you don't know for sure because you don't have the time to read their, their literature. I, um, I have a little collaboration, I shouldn't call it little, but it's a teaching collaboration, not a research one, with someone in the medical school. And the thing that just blew my mind was that um, she said that medical students need to learn empathy. <laughs> and I was like, but isn't that why they want to be doctors? Because they love people and they want to fix people. And she was like, oh, no, that's not actually why they want to be doctors. So that was a, a really mm -hmm. an example of I had this assumption. Yeah, 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 and yeah. Um, just, it was completely yeah. wrong. So yeah. Yeah. Actually, when I think back to all the collaborations I've been on, and I've been on a lot, yeah. I've mm -hmm. always learned something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And whether it's something to do or something not to do, I always learned something. Yeah. And so it was worthwhile, every single collaboration that I've been on, how to manage a team. Mm. Mm. So you'll see particular leaders or views particular leaders that, gee, I really like how they run this project and I really like the intellectual exchange or how to write a grant um, or how to work in schools and do research in schools. Mm. So coming from science, I really didn't know that. So I was really starting from ground zero. So all of these things I learned just by being on these huge collaborative teams. Mm. And it's a nice way to learn. Yeah. It's a nice way to be brought into your discipline and also to connect with people that they know. And so some of the connections I've made through those collaborations are still mentors for me. Mm. Mm. And so it's just been a wonderful journey. But every single collaboration has, I can say, I've learned something from it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really nice opportunity, I think, to learn new skills as well. So, and it might be a skill that you, you might want a taste of what it's like to do that work without necessarily becoming a specialist in it. Mm -hmm. So one of the projects that um, I worked on a few years ago was with a team of visual artists who work quite heavily with um, people in the biomedical sciences. Um, and we were working on a series of projects together that involved conferences and books and so on. But one of the things that they did, because they're artists, is curate a, an arts festival. So there was an art exhibition and there were a range of events events and so on and I'm someone who's written on visual arts for many many years but I have never curated you know an art exhibition I know having done that I do not want to be a curator <laughs> actually <laughs> working individually with the artists they were the, it was a high maintenance job let's put it that way <laughs> but the the insight that you get into what is involved in doing that kind of work to actually be part of the team that's putting on you know the exhibition to see what's involved in curating as someone who's only ever written sort of a, in an art critic sort of capacity it was revelatory to me you know what mm. goes on behind that and now every time just for for amusement if I go into an art gallery or I see an exhibition <laughs> my my understanding of what it takes you know to put those on and what's involved and how they go about it is completely transformative in that way so I think the kind of skills that you know you yeah. get in mm. and just little tastes of things that might augment your work even if you don't want to become a specialist in that I just mm. found it so useful mm -hmm. You're making me think that perhaps I should get some of my literary studies colleagues to help me write one of my novels. <laughs> 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 I wonder how that will. would go down. Yeah. Make note to myself. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Elizabeth, just going back to you and Peter working in a coffee shop together, writing together. Yes. Um, can you think of, are, are there times when the problems, how do you solve problems like um, in that? And I don't mean to solve sort of, I mean, solve the intellectual problem in front of you. Uh, how does it work? Is there sort of like a, a dialogue around it or does someone suggest it and the other person go along with it? And I'm sensitive to the fact, in, particularly in that collaboration, mm. that he was more senior than you. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, 
we didn't have a lot of problems, yeah. I have to admit, with that. We did have differences of perspective, yeah. so we, we would bring those um, differences to it. I think one of the reasons we didn't have a lot of problems <coughs> going ahead with it is because we met regularly. Yeah. I mean, the thing with collaboration is that developing the collaborative relationship it takes time. You have to invest the time in doing it. And, and you don't know what the, the outcome of that is going to be. You know, it could be good. It could just be time that you're investing that doesn't go anywhere. So I think we helped avoid having problems that would become big problems by the fact that we, we had so much regularity, you know, in the, the collaborative process. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we, we sort of worked through problems in a very old fashioned way. We would sit there once a week for an hour at Jeannie's Cafe here on campus and talk through any issues that came up. But because we did that in a, you know, we have a lot of respect for each other's work. And I think maybe one of the things that helped there as well as, as the more, you know, junior party um, in that writing relationship was that I always felt respected you know in what what I brought um, to the table of course my my secret fear about that book because I took steerage of the second half of the book which is located in a much more popular cultural context that my colleague had written was looking at the heavy you know history of statistics and medicine stuff that's in the first half of the book and I was terrified when the reviews came out that people would say well the first half of the book is great I don't really know what happened in the second half so I had you know that was the problem I brought to the project was I guess a, an insecurity about whether I was heavyweight you know enough for the project and that was a potential problem in that I was always orienting us to look at what's happening in the popular sphere, you know, over this time. And so that would bring a difference of perspective to the Borg. Ironically, or, or, or nicely perhaps, um, in the end, one of the things that people have enjoyed most about the book is in fact that it's not this super sort of, you know, scholarly book that's only looking at a very professional sphere. The fact that it has the broader focus, which was what I brought to the book and looked at the, the popular sphere as well, is one of the things that people have enjoyed most about the book. But I think in that instance, you need collaborators who are willing to see outside of their own little sphere as well. They have to want to collaborate with you too. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's a, a concept of the third idea, and that's two <coughs> people come together and they each have an idea about how we're going to um, approach this intellectual question or whatever. And then between them, when they talk it out, the third idea pops up, and the third idea is always better. Uh, that's mm. the concept. And of course, the larger the team, the mm. more ideas you have, and you know, it might be the fifth idea or the 20th idea or whatever. Mm. And I'm thinking particularly when you're working in large mm. teams. So it does make me wonder, um, what is that process of collaborating on ideas? And is it something that you approach in a structured way or is it an, in an organic way? Can you reflect on that at all? I think it depends on who you work with, yeah. doesn't it? Um, <coughs> so I'm thinking of a smaller collaborative project. I think there was about three or four of us. And um, we were writing, we were part of this really large encyclopedic volume for um, philosophy, a philosophical inquiry. Um, and um, so it stems out of the Philosophy for Children program. And I do a lot of research with that in schools. Um, and it was such a fantastic collaboration. There were people all over the world publishing in that volume. But in this one, we came together, we, we put in separate abstracts. And it, there, it was really competitive to actually get the abstract accepted. Um, and then they came back to us and said, We'd like the three of you, like you three from UQ, to because we put in separate abstracts, to work together to put in your chapter. And so it was working with philosophers, uh, two educators and a philosopher. And of course, I had collaborated with this philosopher for a long time. It was Gil Berg. And um, it, was this, it was interesting because and you can still see if you read the chapter, you can see the way I write, and you can see the way he writes, and we're completely different, but the chapter works. Mm. And we were trying to come up with what we both felt was really critical um, in this particular um, chapter that we were writing. And we had a lot of back and forth, back and forth, and the editor was amazing. And uh, eventually we just were having a conversation, and one day it just came up how we were going to connect the ideas and how we were going to write this. And it just, it was an amazing sort of um, kind of um, experience, but really difficult. And we walked away thinking, gosh, we need to understand each other's discipline a little more mm. because um, we come at it from such different ideologies mm. that um, it made it challenging for us to communicate together about a similar area. 
but it was a great experience. So I think that's a learning there mm -hmm. is when you get into collaboration, you've got to learn others, other cultures. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're working with industry, you've got to learn their culture, whether, mm -hmm. and they've got to learn our research culture. We have to learn how they do business. So I think that's a big learning is mm -hmm. understanding how other people work, their way of working. Mm -hmm. Is it similar or different from yours? And how do you get around that if it's very different? So yeah, that would be mine. Hmm. Have you got any reflections like Kelly, the sort of process of collaboration and does it always bring up a better idea? I think that's impossible to know really. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that for me the process is just about, you know, and I think you need the kind of initial face-to-face -face meeting. If you're not actually at the same, in the same physical location, <clears throat> I think that you probably always have to have some point where you kind of meet face-to-face. -face. Well, not entirely. Mm -hmm. I actually got approached by someone online to write a chapter with them and wrote this chapter with this person and never met them till <laughs> about a year or two later. Oh. So it is, it is possible, but we were sort of very disciplinary uh, di disciplinarily aligned, so it was kind of an easy thing for us to do. But uh, I think that you, uh, you know, it's nice to kind of meet face to face so that when you actually do the, the telephone calls or the emails, that you know where the person's coming from. You know, you kind of understand their sense of humour or never do, never do humour over email. I think it's my, it's my <laughs> take home message. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> yeah, so I think that, you know, you know who the person is and, and then everything that happens after that can be done on the telephone, over email, mm -hmm. uh, it can be done through, you know, Zoom or video uh, link up. And I think it's just a matter of having conversations, having meetings and conversations. That's the way I do research, that it's very much, you know, you know, kind of regular catch ups and talking through ideas and, you know, kind of batting around, do we do it this way or that way? And, mm -hmm. and you know, just coming to some kind of uh, agreement and whether or not, you know, you could have done it, you know, as well yourself without the other people, who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just more fun to do it with other people. Yeah, I think uh, if I'm thinking back to writing grants with other folk and, um, you know, sometimes they're better at writing a methodology section and you're better at writing the rest of it. <coughs> and when you put it all together, it's just a really strong application. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. think, I wouldn't have been able to do that on my own had mm -hmm. I not had that person who was better at that mm -hmm. than I was. Mm -hmm. So, and then of course you're learning through that because yeah. you're learning how to write that methodology a little mm -hmm. better. So yeah, I, think, I do think that everybody brings a particular expertise and a particular, um, you know, their own, what do you call it, um, creative element and together, it's bigger than the sum of the independent parts. What's, what's that mm. saying? <laughs> more than more than the sum of its parts. More than the sum of its parts when mm. you come together. So yeah, I knew that mm. because I'm from the school of communication and art. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I knew it was something like that. <laughs> yeah. I um, I wanted to pick up um, Kelly. You mentioned about not meeting people until late in the process. Um, because that is actually my next question is about sort of remote collaboration. But I wanted mm -hmm. to tell you guys a story of um, my first successful ARC grant. Um, there were four of us on the grant application and um, we all worked very closely together. And one of them, I didn't meet until the day we got the grant. I didn't meet in person. I picked her up at the airport because we were going to a conference together. And I was like, oh, aren't you wonderful? You're tall. She's much taller than I expected. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, just sort of shooting the breeze. And we didn't know that that was the day that the ARC results mm. would be. And while we were driving home from the airport, th one of my other collaborators phoned uh, on the, my, you know, hands-free mm -hmm. car phone <laughs> and said, oh, my God, we got the grant. So it was like the first time we met <laughs> was the day that we got it. It was so fantastic. So that was a very team-building experience. <laughs> but, um, the question is actually um, a nuts and bolts question about um, we're not always collaborating with people in the same building, mm. the same city even, sometimes not even the same state. Um, so you mentioned email or Skype, mm. Zoom, blah, blah, blah. What other tools are you guys using to collaborate remotely? They're the ones I use. So um, I have a new project with uh, uh, the Office of Environment and Heritage in New South Wales and also with uh, colleagues in CSIRO mm -hmm. uh, and it will be QUT as well. And uh, yeah, and so we're in S Brisbane, Sydney and Perth. And yeah, so we had a meeting um, via Zoom the other day mm -hmm. and I think that works really well. I think actually, uh, I. 
the, I, I wanted the uh, IT people to reinstall uh, install Skype into my you know new um, desktop, and they went, no, no, we prefer Zoom. I actually think that it, yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's yeah. better. It's yeah. better. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you um, when you uh, collaborate with people in government, there's a lot of programs that they can't install. A government are really kind of strict about what you install on what mm -hmm. they install on their computers. Mm -hmm. Zoom seems to be something that that they can just kind of click on and they don't have any problems with. So, yeah, I tend to uh, use. I think these days, I think increasingly people are using video conferencing because it's mm -hmm. so much better than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So when I was a visiting scientist at CSIRO a number of years ago, and we used to, some of us were in Brisbane, some some of the researchers were in Perth, and we'd always do a video link up. Oh, it was just terrible and just never worked mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. And so I think that inc increasingly um, the video um, link ups, I think, are working yeah. really well. Yeah. So that's my, that's, that's, that's what I do, or, or, or phone calls, but but generally speaking, you know, emails and, and Zoom, mm. and uh, and I think that's working for both, you know, um, other people mm. and uh, in other universities as mm. well as people outside <coughs> of universities as well. Mm. Yeah, you've got to be careful where you store data now. So mm. Mm. the research data management system, and I've only just started using that to be honest, but it's fantastic. So you can load up, you can have multiple RDM sites and you can load up sensitive data on one that only maybe one or two of you in the group can look at. Then you can take that and analyze that and give it to the whole team. Mm -hmm. So the whole team can access everything from the project, all the documentation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been, it's a plug for UQ mm -hmm. RDM, but it really works really well yeah, mm -hmm. for collaborations. Yeah, it, I mean, there are so many research teams now that are so distributed, you know, internationally or nationally. I ran a big meeting a couple of weeks ago with a large team. We're involved in a collaborative exercise, um, but all of our documentation mm. for the for the meeting was all online, so everyone could access it remotely. Everyone can edit it, you know, from their places, so we're working on the same um, document as well. Um, but most of us were sitting around a, a boardroom table, but we had about five laptops open with heads from of different people, you know, in different <laughs> locations <laughs> on them as well. And I was thinking, it's not so long ago that this would have been really difficult to yeah, do, yeah, yeah. but the fact that our, our members who were you know, overseas or in different places, were like, oh, sure, I'll just zoom in, you know, for the meeting, um, and could do that. That's a real game changer, I think, mm. and that's really in the last couple of years. But I will say, I think, I mean, it's really great to have the access to the remote, you know, to be able to collaborate remotely. And I think if you're doing that, it's nice to have the face-to-face -face contact, which is why I think mm. everyone mm. likes the the, um, the video um, calls. But I think, you know, as you were saying um, earlier, there's really no getting around the importance of actual face-to-face -face contact, mm. especially Agreed. in the early stages of building a collaboration. I'm in the early stages of a new collaboration at the moment with the Museum of Applied Science and Arts in um, the Powerhouse Museum in Sydney. Um, and so I can do some of that remotely. Um, but I go down like every sort of six weeks or so and spend at least a couple of days with the, the team there. And each time I go, the person who is mostly guiding um, my work there will say, oh, there's someone else that you need to meet. And so I've brought them into this meeting. The next time I go down, there's going to be a whole group of us sitting around the, the table. We're getting to know each other because this is a collaboration that will go on, you know, for the next probably three to five years. And that <laughs> process, like what comes up when people are actually sitting with you, you know, mm -hmm. face to face, mm -hmm. it really, there's no escaping how much more valuable it is, especially in the early stages. Once we have a relationship, it's different. You, you can do it long distance. But the what comes out of us sitting around a table together, that that's invaluable and it's not easily replaceable by other mechanisms. I well, think. I think you can kind of do that trust building, can't you? Yeah. So we had an inception meeting for that project with the New South Wales government agency. And so everyone's in the same room and you kind of see people and you have those conversations and, and that, you know, you kind of go, oh, yeah. they seem like a decent person. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so you, you sort of feel a sense of trust as, as the uh, as the project goes on, yeah. and there's it's hard harder to do that I think yeah. if you don't have that initial face to face meeting. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I feel like my research team is a little overserviced by <laughs> <laughs> digital tools that we use, but I'll talk about them anyway just so you guys know. Um, we use Zoom, though we still mm -hmm. say we're going to Skype each other, and then we all hop on Zoom. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> old habits die hard. That's how we do our, our meetings. Um, we all write together in Google Docs, like we'll all have mm. virtual writing retreats where we all block out three hours, we sit down together, we're all in the same document, we can see each other's cursors moving. Mm. Um, and often we'll have an iMessage chat window open where we're sending each other messages. You can use the chat in the Google Doc as well, but mm. we're just so used to iMessaging each other sort of constantly, including 
horoscopes. Um, <laughs> and um, we used to use, when we were setting up the project, not so much now, we're just writing up, we used a program called, um, at the time it was called Da Pulse, which was very street. Um, but now it's called Monday.com and it's a project management tool where you can go in and put in all of your um, your tasks, their deadlines, and um, who's on to them, and it's all color coded. It's really quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we used that for a while, and our research assistants could all see it, and they had all their tasks were there. So that was a fabulous one. Um, we use WhatsApp if we need to share photographs because mm -hmm. they don't lose mm -hmm. resolution. Yeah, you can good. do them over um, WhatsApp. Um, and um, we use Dropbox for sensitive documents mm -hmm. and just to sort of store documents. I don't like storing them on Google Docs. I, mm -hmm. One of my friends said we should mm -hmm. just put it all in Google Docs, and that note. That doesn't feel right. Um, and of course we use a shared Zotero or Zotero. I don't know if anyone has, knows how to pronounce that. It's a uh, reference and citation software. And we just have a great big shared library um, that has all of our stuff in there. So any of us can put it in, any of our research assistants mm. can put it in and it makes it very easy for you to pull out a bibliography mm. or anything like that. And we don't e need to be in the same room mm. or even in the same country for that. Mm. Same time zone helps. <laughs> but, um, but that's all. I think they're the only ones that I've used. Perhaps I'll ask the audience later if they've got any other good um, things like that for managing projects when we're not all in the same place. Um, in fact, one of my colleagues on that project always says, um, the best way to do work is a good collaboration, then working by yourself, then a lot of daylight, <laughs> and then a mediocre collaboration. <laughs> so I wonder if you guys wanted to talk about that. Is, is that the case? Do you still think that mediocre collaborations are better than working by yourself, or how would you feel about that? Or do you, you think um, she's right? That's a tough question. <laughs> it is, it is. I think I've ever had a, um, I, I, I'm going to sound like Pollyanna, right? You know, sort of saying, oh, I've never had a bad collaboration. <laughs> I, I just, I can't think of one. I can't I think of... I will ask you my next question. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, yeah. I mean, I can think of, you know, kind of, my postdoctoral um, position was on an ARC <coughs> linkage grant. And uh, the government agency that we worked with um, had a dedicated person that, that, you know, had to liaise with us and I had to liaise with that person. and. And uh, <coughs> yeah, gosh, it's hard to know who might end up seeing this video. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it was just a, it was a process of getting to know how she worked. Like it was yeah. a very like the other researchers didn't get her, and and I, you know, like it was it was really kind of process of getting to know. So that was kind of hard. It, it was it was tricky at the you know I was just a just you know graduated PhD student, so it wasn't like I was very experienced, and so. You know, until I could kind of work out how to, you know, make that happen kind of smoothly, then, then you know, then of course a collaboration can actually slow you down mm -hmm. because, you know, you're trying to run around, trying to work out, you know, how to, you know, satisfy the needs of the, you know, the other, you know, agency or, or other people that you're actually working with. So I think that the the main way on which I think a collaboration can be uh, not helpful is where you kind of have to jump through some hoops that you think, why do I have to do this? This doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me or this is really frustrating and annoying. And, you know, but I think, you know, and so I think, you know, you often have to kind of make a decision about whether you're just going to go, oh, well, this is just part of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to learn how to kind of, you know, how it all works and just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. jump through the hoops and go, right, and onto the, the research. Mm -hmm. um, so so mm -hmm. I think that it's, so, you know, I think that, that 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 can be something that can feel frustrating, mm -hmm. uh, and this is not an exact answer to your question, but no, no, perhaps a kind of uh, a sort of roundabout <laughs> answer to the question. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the the other question to ask about the question is, what is it that makes it a mediocre collaboration? Yeah. Is it the collaborators, or is it the collaboration yeah. that is? can be characterised as mediocre. So okay. I'm thinking of a couple of, of examples that I've had of, of complete non-starter okay. collaborations um, that where in those instances, the people that I was working with were absolutely brilliant in their own fields. The collaboration as a relationship just did not 
get off the ground. So, I mean, you mm. guys have mentioned some wonderful grant funded collaborative mm. projects that you've mm. worked on. So as a kind of counterpoint to that, I'll say that when I've applied for grants, my success rate for grants that I've applied for that are, that are individual grants is very high, which is nice. Every single grant that I've applied for as part of a team has not been funded. And the reason, so, I, you know, I think it's important to, to be upfront, you know, about that as well, that side of collaboration. And in those instances, in the cases that I'm thinking of, there are three occasions where I've tried to go up with collaborative teams mm -hmm. for funding. So we've worked on the grant together. And in those instances, the people I were work, that I was planning <laughs> to work with, absolutely brilliant in their fields. But when we tried to develop the grant projects together, they were complete non-starters. And it's usually I was the person who was leading the teams. And so you have this awful realisation when you've already committed, you've said you'll do it, you start working together and you think, this is a non-starter, but we're committed now mm. and we're just going to spend our entire summer trying to get oh, this no. project into a competitive category, hoping it will. And usually for me, realising at the end, no, this is not good at all. Mm. And so the, then the question is, what is it? What went wrong mm. between working mm. with these brilliant people that didn't make the collaboration, you know, as a group work? In almost all of those instances, the problem was lack of preparation, that we knew each other and we wanted to work mm. together and we knew that we shared interests. So we thought we've got the we've got the gist of it, you know, we've got the catalyst to put a project together, but we hadn't done enough work actually conceptualising the whole project before we committed to it and sat down and wrote it. That mm. was the main problem. Mm. The other thing that I noticed is when you're working with people outside your own discipline, so I work a lot with visual artists, for instance, instance, when, when I'm applying for grant schemes, they often fund academic research as opposed to artistic research, and they can be funneled into different fields. And so then you have a whole series of problems that arises from that. People, often international partners, who simply aren't used to the kind of systems that we use, the sort of grant mm. schemes that we have. So they're not prepared to, to, to talk in the language that we're required to talk in when we put those um, projects together. So sometimes it's their lack of expertise with the projects that you're trying to, or the systems that you're trying to work in. But sometimes with artists, their whole way of thinking is completely different from the one that I'm obliged to put together as a, as a project mm. plan. And so when I try to say things say, so what's your methodology for doing this? I say, we don't really think about it that way. We're creative people, you know, we were. And so then I realised our, our knowledge, our ways of approaching this are not going to fuse in the three months I have to put this project together. So that's a lack of preparation um, in terms of those collaborations. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kim? Any reflections on mediocre collaboration? Um, well, I think back to all of my collaborations something was achieved from all of them. Mm. Um, some were far more productive than others, and some were a lot more enjoyable than others. Um, but if it comes down to really, I suppose, choosing <coughs> which collaborations to be part of, doesn't it? Um, and we were talking about this just before, the three of us, about, you know, you have to be selective if you're going to, you know, put your name on a number of things or agree <coughs> to be part of a team you run the risk of them all getting up and then you're in trouble, but usually they don't. <laughs> and I've had the, that other experience yeah. where I was a junior academic and so I did agree to go on a number of collaborations. They all got up. Oh and so then it's, yeah, a huge <laughs> workload. Um, so I think it's about that. I think now that collaboration is something that's really being promoted and the research shows that people who collaborate tend to have more outputs than people that don't. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that we're all going to have a lot more offers mm -hmm. to collaborate. Mm -hmm. And I think what's going to be a critical skill is how to choose, how to make a decision. What are the kinds of questions you need to ask mm -hmm. before you start a collaboration? It's that negotiating mm -hmm. about the collaboration before the collaboration starts. And I think, thinking back to all of mine, um, I've been very fortunate actually to work with people that, leaders that have been fantastic. Um, and then some collaborations that I stepped into, they didn't go as well as the others. And I'm thinking, I didn't ask some questions mm -hmm. about that. So I didn't ask questions about 
authorship. <coughs> I didn't ask questions about <coughs> what is my expected contribution. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and some of them that were huge, like really big, multi-institutional. I didn't ask the question with, if there's so many of us on this, am I actually going to have any relevant contribution? It's actually, mm -hmm. am, is it going to be active involvement? Mm -hmm. So there's all these things that I think back to all my collaborations that the ones that